Hey guys, what's up? This is Dan. Hey, I just wanted to give you guys a quick heads up going into this episode. So we were recording and um, somehow lost <laughs> power. And so we we ended up losing the very end of this podcast that you're about to listen to. Um, but we we figured, hey, we'll give you a heads up now because we did get all the value that we wanted to convey into that episode. So instead of re-recording, we decided to run with it and just give you guys a heads up as you get into the episode. I appreciate you guys listening. Sorry that we're idiots and uh, we didn't realize, but I think it's a good episode and let us know what you think. Thanks. Hey guys, this is Matt with the Internship Podcast. Uh, I am joined here today with, obviously, the co-host, Dan. What's up, guys? Sorry. Dan's sipping on a little cocktail, Friday afternoon cocktail. Yeah, got to. A a good... Keto cocktail. 3 p.m., Bloody Mary, nothing like it. Um, today, we are going to talk about getting fired. Probably the most, you know, least talked about uh, topic when it comes to careers. Something that people don't like talking about because for the most part, they like to forget it. But it happens. So, Well, I think, I think also it, it can be humiliating, right? Which we'll get into for sure. Okay. Absolutely. So, I just <laughs> so I didn't get your spark notes this time. So so what we're going to talk about is one what are the signs? Like is there any way to prevent anything you can do to prevent it if you feel like it's going to happen? And then uh two what to do when it does happen and then we're going to kind of give our takes on it either from uh personal stories or people that we know or anything that might have happened to to some of the candidates that we've worked with. So to kind of kick it off here Dan if somebody's going to get fired, is there any way that they can know? I think, I mean, so there's a difference between being fired and being laid off, right? Correct. Like if somebody's going to be fired, is there is there things that they can do to see you writing on the wall? Fuck yeah. Like if you don't know that you're getting fired, look in the mirror, <laughs> right? right? I mean, like if you literally are going about your day and thinking you're killing it and then all of a sudden you come in one day and that you get fired – um, I think right there is, is a problem <laughs> from a personal standpoint, but I will say that there are situations where you won't see it coming, right? So like, let's say I go in today, everything's fine. And then I email, I send out a corporate email or something and it, it's all fucked up. It says a word that really offends a lot of people. And like then fuck? I, yeah. And then I end up getting fired that day. Uh, I didn't plan on getting fired. I didn't see myself getting fired, but the company had to do something to rectify the situation, so yeah. they fired me. Yeah, I think most of the time you can see the writing on the wall, but a lot of time, a lot of times people will be in denial, right? So I think taking that into consideration, it's like if your manager is constantly correcting your work, if you can see your manager visibly getting frustrated at the stuff that you do, yeah, like if you constantly have to be being told what to do or to redo something or asked why you did this, like. Not to say you're 100% going to get fired, but it's it's a pretty clear-cut thing that things aren't going really well at your job. Is that safe to say? Yeah, for sure. And by the way, I do, I do want to say that sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes there's bad training. Sometimes they want you to get up to, up to speed faster than, you know, is humanly possible or shitty, whatever. Shitty leadership. Yeah. So, but at the same time, you'll know, right? Yeah. So, so here's the thing. And, and, um, and I think one of the points of this podcast is this, like if you're in this situation, because if it's your first job, you might not know, like you're going to feel like you're fucking up left and right, no matter what in your first job, right? because you've just never had a full-time position before. And this is completely new to you. So if you see that's happening, or if you're starting to get a little bit of a hankering that the writing's on the wall, I could be getting fired. What can people do? I mean, what can people do for what? If they start, if they to start not to see get it. fired, right? Like if they start, like is yeah, that, like yeah. if somebody can see, like my manager is getting visibly frustrated, like I keep having to be corrected, I can tell that there's a longer learning curve than probably what they expected. Yeah, I think there's two things that you can do. Um, one, you can buckle up and work your ass off and play catch up and do better and take your time if it's attention to detail or whatever. Take notes on what's being told to you. Um, and basically find your own answers. Um, I mean, I know asking questions is key, but asking questions multiple times, the same question can be frustrating for a hiring manager when they're trying to do their shit too. So I think that 
working hard, you can work your way out of it maybe if you really turn the corner and, and dedicate yourself to changing. You have a small window. You maybe have 30 to 60 days to start making those changes before it's over. Uh, but another thing obviously would be talk to the manager. You know, well, so, so for me, uh, if I was having problems – or if one of my employees was having problems, I would hope that they come talk to me. Um, and, and you'll probably have a conversation. The, the manager will probably have that conversation with you prior. Like, hey, listen, Matt, we we have to get better. We have to get better here. This is where we're, we're failing. And if they're not offering you some assistance with the stuff that you're not doing very good at, then they're probably not a great manager. But uh, regardless, if you go talk to them and you say, hey, listen, I can tell that you're getting frustrated with me. I can tell that... I'm falling behind the eight ball. Here's some some areas I feel a little overwhelmed in, um, and this is why. And, and really, just lay out your situation and how you're feeling personally, and and ask them if if you guys can put together a plan to get better or a plan that can can get you out of that rut. If yep. you really like the job or you're worried about getting fired or something like that, but I would definitely go to the manager and just say, hey, listen, I know that. You're frustrated. I know that I'm I'm not keeping up with where I need to be, you know. And then kind of explain yourself a little bit. No excuses. So just tell them personally, like I'm struggling with learning this, or I'm struggling with learning that, or doing this, or you know I'm not getting feedback or whatnot. And so sometimes if you go in and you have that conversation, the hiring manager is going to be like, "All right, great. Matt came and talked to me. I feel good." They're going to go home at night. They're on their drive home. They're probably going to think, "Hey, I'm glad that Matt came talk to me. You know, let's give him another shot. I'll work with him. We'll put together a plan and we'll knock this thing out." Absolutely, <clears throat> communication. So, if you do that, and in, your, in a perfect world, like you said, your manager would come to you. They talk to you about this. But I think we're to the point where we realize there's there aren't a, there aren't many perfect managers out there. So just communicating, just addressing the fact, like, "Hey, I realize that I'm struggling." I want to figure out what I can do in the, in the job, in the in the nine to five, eight to five that I'm here outside of work. Like, what can I do? What steps can I do? What are the two to three things that are the most important aspects of this role that I can work on that are going to improve my performance? Right? You can even talk to peers. Like, if you see somebody that's doing what you're, you know, what you're doing and they're killing it, ask them what they did to get ramped up. Like, ask them what they feel like the most important aspects are, and again, what you can do for it. Do not think. Let me just hide out. Let me just hide out. Let me just get this swept under the rug because that's when people get quote unquote blindsided, right? Like if you feel like that you can just kind of hide out from this and like it'll all blow over and eventually you're going to learn it. No, because what's going to happen is your manager is going to get frustrated with you, right? They're going to correct you. And then all of a sudden you will start to realize your manager is talking to you a little bit less. But most likely, it's not because you're doing your job better. It's because they're already putting in a plan in motion to replace you. Yeah, and I think that like you shouldn't strive just to get by either, because that's when when things slow down in business or whatnot. Like, if you're just the person just getting by, just doing the bare minimum, you're probably the one on the chopping block when layoffs come or when business slows down or they lose that contract or whatever. So, you should actively be having that communication. Not even if you don't even think you're getting fired. You should have communication. You should try to meet with your boss once a week and talk to him like, hey, this, you know what I mean? Like, this is what I'm struggling with. How can I get better? And the, the conversation always needs to be, how can I get better? And that's not just work. That's life in general, right? How can I get better? Yeah. So, um, so I guess that's how I would handle it. Um, yep. And I, I do think that you'll get more support maybe at a smaller company with smaller team sizes where the manager has more time. Uh, I could be wrong if a manager is just like, hey, I'm going to go play golf and you go do your shit. And if you don't do your shit, you're fired type situation. Um, I also think that some people um, aren't willing to break down some barriers in terms of like fear, right? Like cold calling. Like I took the sales job because I was really good at selling sunglasses or cars or whatever. But those people came into me. You know what I mean? Like every day I showed up at the dealership and. People started walking in and I sold them a car because they were looking at cars. And then you go into a sales environment where you have to go grind and, and develop business and there's a fear of cold calling. And, and this could be like any, you know, a lot of different jobs, but mm -hmm. um, sales is a good one example. You know, there's a fear there that you didn't have to face before. And so sometimes you just have to tackle that because 
I mean, the worst case scenario is you're fired. You, you know what I mean? So yep. you, you have nothing to lose but try to make those cold calls. And yep. you're just doing your job. Absolutely. So then let's say it's too late or shitty management or, you know, you're somebody who just ended up sweeping it out of the rug. You get fired. What's your plan of action? What's the first thing you would do? So I've never been fired. Um, actually, I take that back. LMI Aerospace. And I maybe I shouldn't call it the company, but... Um, we can always bleep it out. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> um, so I was with LMI Aerospace. I took the contract job because my niche, I had to leave my job and go to a different industry because my niche and my business is, was the industry that I was working in. So I, th- from a non-compete and all that standpoint, I had to separate myself. And so I went into this LMI Aerospace and I came on board and... I tried to have the conversations, but my manager was traveling all the time. She really didn't give a shit, you know. And so I started to coast. I knew it was coming, and I just milked it out, and I started building my business, like, while I was at work, which is not the thing to do. Maybe it is if you want to build your own business, but, um, you know. But you knew, but here's the thing. You knew that you were going to start your own thing, right? Yeah. And so, so let's talk about if you were, like, at one of your first companies and you're just learning. All of a sudden, you get fired. You're completely blindsided. Yeah. Like, knowing what you know now, what's the first thing as a candidate that you would do? I mean, I think the first thing I would do is pack up my shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Why don't I take this one for a little bit? I think... I think <laughs> that's a, <laughs> Literally, I'd pull that. Thing. I'd pull that situation and was it half-baked? Or he's like, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. Yep. I'm out. Yeah, but he quit. In this case, you're <laughs> oh, being fired. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh... I think the first thing, <laughs> first thing you could probably do is update your resume, right? Get the resume updated and then go to LinkedIn, update LinkedIn, and maybe find a recruiter, right? Whatever industry that you're in, whatever niche that you're in or that you're looking to do, look on LinkedIn. You can find a recruiter in basically any space, right? A recruiter will help you in the sense of they might not find you a job, but they can at least talk to you. Like they're working with the job market, they understand what it looks like. Uh, And then there's not every recruiter is a good recruiter, but it's somebody to talk to when you feel like, you know, what the fuck am I going to do? Because this is like one of the most crucial things that can happen in your life when you actually get fired. And I would say, and this is, I I actually kind of thought about this later is, as frantic as you may want to be and holy shit i've got to find a job when the fuck's my next paycheck coming in like where am i going to look who am i going to talk to what am i going to do slow down yeah take a breath take your time and think if you got fired from a job it means there's a combination of something wrong with the company and something wrong with what you're doing right nobody gets fired for no reason Part I, part of the blame is going to be on you, no matter what the situation is, right? Yeah, and I think after the initial shock of getting fired and getting like going home and you know licking your wounds or whatever, you actually realize that it was a weight lifted off your shoulder once you're detached from that situation because you're you know every day going into work you're like fuck man I'm like it, you know I, I just got to grind it out today I gotta I have to hit this one little thing and like you're barely scraping by you know it's coming. Um, and so once you detach from that situation and that stress really of the job, yeah, the financial piece is going to be, is going to suck. Right. But, um, everything works out, right? Like if you look five years ahead, you're going to have a job. Life's going to be good again. You know, it's just this temporary period. And one thing that I would do to your point of finding a recruiter is maybe revisit our podcast on using LinkedIn as a tool to, uh, we had the podcast episode, um, LinkedIn as a tool to uh, land your dream job or internship. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how to network with the hiring managers at companies that you want to work with or just network in general. And I will say, you know, networking is key. Uh, you know, Matt said, obviously, update your resume, update your LinkedIn, put the uh, put the word seeking in your in your LinkedIn profile on the heading because I search personally, I search seeking on a regular like on a regular basis. Like if I need somebody quick who has industry experience, I'll put seeking and mortgage. And if all those people pop up who have the word seeking in their profile. So, yep. Yeah. And so take your time, 
reflect on what happened, what you liked, what you liked about the company or why you got with the company and then what went wrong, because that's going to transition into, okay, what am I going to be looking for next? And it is the hardest way to make a trans like a transition, like mentally, because it breaks you down, but it honestly, it, it's like you said, it's for the better and it can be one of the best things that happened in your life, which is kind of what I wanted to transition to and talking about personal stories. So it sounds like you don't really have necessarily a story. Uh, well, you've got a little bit of one. I mean, I have I. half a story, yeah. right? Because I was planning on, it was either me quitting or, and actually, I will tell this story because it was kind of funny. So I, being a recruiter, you have access to everybody's schedules a lot of the times and it, while you're trying to schedule for hiring managers and whatnot. And uh, you have an Outlook or Google or whatever you use, you can see which conference rooms are being used at certain times and who's using them and for what. And so I went to book an interview and I noticed that my my manager had a, had the conference room booked off with somebody's name. And so I just grabbed that name, I plugged it into LinkedIn and it was a recruiter. So I knew she was interviewing somebody to take my job and so I was way ahead of it. So I actually, one day... I, she was walking by my office. I was like, hey, can you come in here? She came in. I was like, can you close the door? I was like, have a seat. <laughs> to your manager? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, so tell me, how, how was the interview with uh, Sarah? And she's like, what inter- What do you – I was like, you know, the interview with uh, Sarah. And then I said the last name. And she's like, how would you know about that? And I was like, look, I get that this isn't working out. So – do you want to cut this now or do you want me to work till you get a replacement? Like, oh, what are we doing? So that was kind of like my firing story, right? Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, give me the weekend. We'll pay you. It was a holiday weekend, so I got an extra paid day. And then she called me like that night of the holiday and was like, hey, we're going to cut the cord basically. So technically I got fired, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I've got um, I've got a fired story and it was like um... – like most people, when it happens, like whenever it does, it was one of the most embarrassing times in my life, right? Um, so I was at a company where I didn't feel like I was progressing as fast as I wanted to, at least financially, which was partially my fault because it was a commission-based job. Um, so I got reached out by a recruiter to another uh, another recruiting agency. Different industry, you know, it's perm versus temp, which most people don't know what that means, but it's just a whole a whole different beast. Uh, they ended up extending me an offer that was like 150% of my salary. They were going to give me their three biggest clients that they had. And they were also going to give me like an extra, uh, I want to say like 1500 to two grand uh, for the first six months, like as I was ramping up. So my motivator at the time was money and it was a no brainer to me. Well, I took the position. There was no real training. I had never been in an industry like that. It was just I didn't know what the fuck that I was doing. And then my my manager at the time was going on maternity leave. So she was there for two weeks to train me. And then that was it. And then they gave me to another manager that was two weeks away. Anyway, a month, like not even a full month, they let me go, like fired me. Really? Yep. Um, and I was, it was, like I said, it was one of the most embarrassing, like shittiest feelings of my life. Like now, like looking back, yes, like it's a pretty volatile company. Like it was, right? Like they're obviously doing something right. But looking back, it was of the 17 recruiters, the longest tenure there was like nine or 10 months, something like that. Um, And so as shitty of a situation that they put me in, like I put myself in that situation. I could have done research on the company. Like I could have figured out what I was doing. Honestly, I probably oversold myself a little bit just because I figured I could make the transition and it was tough, right? So the the worst part about it is, was like, I was an idiot like, at the time, like, was not managing my money well, ended up having to bartend to, until I figured out what I was going to do, ended up having to move back with my mom for like a short period of time, like as an adult, which is the worst thing in the world you could possibly like, at least for me, you could possibly do. Um, but what it made me do was like, during those times, like I had so much time to sit down and think like, okay, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, what do I want to do with my life? Uh, and that's when I started thinking about like, could I start my own thing? Could I start my own recruiting agency? Like, what would that start to look like? And I landed a job at a fortune 500 company here, like made it out. Like, so like I said, it's, I put myself in that situation, right? 
it was definitely partially. We need to do a podcast on that, by the way. It, like how to look into a company and how volatile they could be before you go into it. So go ahead. Sorry. I just... No, you're perfectly fine. So, um, but it was that shitty situation that ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me. Because if they wouldn't have fired me, if they would have like invested a little bit more in training, like I could still be there. And I don't, I really don't want to talk shit on the company because I actually have a friend that still works there and she loves it. Right. And so it sucked whenever I got fired and she was in that weird situation. Yeah. And sometimes, and sometimes it's all, it all comes down to culture, right? Like sometimes culture. it's just not a fit for you. And sometimes it is a fit for somebody else. Yeah. And, and so it's like, you look back at that. It's like, now I don't have my own company. Like I live life on my terms. Like I'm building that and I'm super excited about it. And so, like you said, it's culture. Like I wasn't meant to work there, but getting fired and as shitty as I thought. And for the longest time I hated them for it. And I was like, just super like, fuck the world. Right. Yeah. Um, but it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me because of how happy I am now. And I am so much happier now making, yes, I'm making more money. Like, you know, I can have the freedom to create my own schedule, but just like the happiness factor, the fulfillment of what I'm doing now is far greater than it could have ever been working for somebody else. Yeah, for sure. And, and I, I think that there's countless stories of super successful people that got fired from jobs and then they went on to build up these companies or they went on to do something great and, I think that it's actually good for everybody to get fired maybe once. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like don't make a habit of it. But if it happens to you, look at it as an experience and you're going to get tougher. And to Matt's point, you're going to learn some things about yourself and, and how you operate as an employee and what kind of industry you want to work in or what kind of culture you want to work in. And really I think it goes down to, yeah, I, of course in the short term you got to find a job and you got to figure out the finances and you got to do things like that. But in the long term – once you get established again and get back on your feet, it's just getting getting knocked down, getting back on your feet, right? And as soon as you get back on your feet, then you can start to look around and say, you know, this is the type of company I want to work for. This is the kind of role I want to be in. These are the questions I need to ask before I go in. And, and like you're going you're gonna to be so much more prepared for the rest of your career just based on getting fired one time. And, and to Matt's point, like, yeah, it's humiliating. I've been a part of, of layoffs myself uh, where I didn't get laid off, but I had to like – talk to people about getting laid off and that was super difficult and I watched them put their shit in a, in a cardboard box and walk out the door and these are people that I recruited in so think about how hard that was for me in terms of I talked them into coming to this company saying hey I got a great opportunity and then you know eight months down the road they got laid off and so being laid off and being fired I think that there is an is a common common feeling that you could get when you get home from that situation you know where you're like oh fuck now what and you know getting fired getting laid off are two different things but i think that you have the same feeling in terms of like now what yep absolutely